All life form strives to the max of its potential except human beings. All life form strives to the max of its potential except human beings. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it possibly can. You never heard of a tree growing half as high as it could. No, trees don't grow half. A tree drives its roots as deep as it can, reaches as high as it can, produces every leaf it can, every fruit it possibly can. To the max, every life form strives to the max, except human beings. Now, why not human beings? Jot this down. You've been given the dignity of choice. You're not a robot. You don't have to repeat this year the same as last year. You can tear up last year's plan, develop a new plan. So, the dignity of being a human being. Now, here's the choice on being a human being. To be part of all we were meant to be, or to be all. To strive for all, or half, or part, or some. The choice is up to you. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences, their frequency. And their intensity. Life is not just watching the clock tick away. Life is a collection of experiences. Their intensity, their frequency. When should you start the day? As soon as you have it finished. Plan the day the best you can, leaving plenty of room for improvising and surprises and all the stuff that happens during the course of the day. But if you've planned a good productive day, now you start that day, you can't believe how much more valuable your time will be. Don't start the day until you have it finished. Now here's the next one. Don't start the week until you've had it finished. Now to lay out a week is a pretty good challenge. Next, don't start the month until you have it finished. The places to go and the people to see and the productivity and the sales and the customers and the development and all the rest of what you want to accomplish during the course of 30 days. Don't start the month until it's finished. And then here's the big one. This is really challenging. Don't start the year until you have it finished. To the best of your ability, it can't be finished like minute by minute. And it might get all upset. It might get torn up and you do a new one. You make so much progress the first 90 days that now you've got, you've multiplied it all by two by three. Because that happened to me. I thought, wow, here's how, this is gonna be a great year. By the time I'd finished the third month, I'm rolling, I'm soaring. So many things are happening, I revised my whole year's plan. I got better. I got better day by day and week by week and month by month. And I'm asking you to do the same thing until you can develop a long arm and a long reach. Until you can develop influence that won't quit. Touch people next year you couldn't touch this year. Touch people now you couldn't touch before. Conduct a meeting now you couldn't conduct before. Heart and soul now mixed in there that wasn't there, missing before. I'm asking all of you to get better in spite of the winters, in spite of the downturn. The money downturn, the social downturn, the personal downturn, whatever it is. Just get stronger. Get better. I'm asking you to drive worry into a small corner. You gotta worry some. All this negative stuff serves, serves some purpose, but the key is for you to be the master, not the servant. Here's what I'm asking you to do. You be the master of worry. Drive it into a small corner. Don't let it loose. And I'm asking you to go home with some new faith and some new courage. I'm asking you, don't worry. Drive it into a small corner. We've all got concerns, and sometimes we all wonder 
And sometimes there's a little crack of doubt. We worry a little, but I'm telling you, drive it into a small corner. Drive your worries into a small corner. Enemies of the mind, you've got to do battle with in the summer. One is pessimism that tries to get you only to see the negative side. Of course, there's the negative side. Life is part negative. What else is new? If the glass is half empty, it is half empty. You say, well, I've been only taught to see that it's half full. Well, sure, it's half full. But it's also half empty. I mean, can't you handle that? I mean, you know, that's not too difficult. But here's what pessimism would try to get you to do. Believe that it's only half empty. And when pessimism comes to your mind, you've got to educate pessimism because pessimism is stupid. Pessimism tries to get you to believe that it's only half empty. Of course it's half empty, but it's not only half empty. It's also half full. I'm asking you to be in charge. Be in charge of your own mind. Be in charge of your own destiny. Do battle with your enemy. Do battle with your enemies. Take sword to your enemies. Whatever's going to destroy those values, take sword to it. If it's worry, take sword to it. If it's threat, threaten back. Take your harvest and all that comes your way with full responsibility. Don't complain. That fourth season, complaining, telling you, could ruin all of your chances. Complaining sometimes starts as an infection. If you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. Do battle with it. In the harvest time, reap your harvest without complaint. It's your crop, you sowed it. You either made the calls or didn't make the calls. You wrote the letters, you didn't write the letters. You were steady or you weren't steady. You did it or you didn't do it. You put together a good day or you didn't put together a good day. Take responsibility when the harvest time finally comes and say, hey, it's my crop, I've got to take responsibility for it. I do not complain. I'm asking you to be touched with the smallest of people's challenges. Don't just be touched with the challenge. I'm asking you to be touched with the problem. Let people's problems get to you. Let people's problems touch your heart this year like never before. Be touched. Let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. The problems that are out there, people struggling with their economy, struggling with their health, struggling with their future, I'm asking you to let that get around your heart. Let it do something to you. Don't go untouched. Don't go unmoved. When you walk out of here, open yourself up. Don't build up the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness and opportunity. Take the walls down. Let yourself be touched by what's going on out there. Let sad things make you sad, as well as happy things make you happy. Let your heart get touched. What a next year you could have if you pay more attention this year. Soak it up, gather it up and reflect at certain times what's going on and what's happening and this year will take a more powerful place in your experience. People will not believe the words you've chosen. They will not believe the heart and soul that you've mixed with words. They won't believe the power you've got. We've got this extraordinary opportunity now. Let us not keep it. Let us share it. Let us reach out with a long reach, a strong reach, an unprecedented reach. Let us reach out and touch people not just with our opportunity, let's touch people with our lives. Let's touch people with our experiences. Let's touch people with our heart and soul. But here's what I did. I worked around the clock, around the clock, so that I would make up in numbers what I lacked in skill. When you're new, you make up in numbers what you lack in skill. Now, when you become more skillful, the numbers can go down, but at first, if you want to compete or if you want to really get good, you've got to put in the numbers. I'll tell you what's really going to serve you well, and that's the excitement you feel inside that isn't even probably expressed on the outside. The excitement that runs deep, the excitement that stirs commitment, the excitement that stirs courage. Give me the chance and I will get the job done. That kind of excitement.